Hello again, live stream. Uh, today I will be doing an inking tutorial to show all of you how I ink. Um, I've been asked over the years to do tutorials on how I ink in color. Um, I never have because um, there are already so many tutorials on how to ink and uh, cell shade. So I've kind of been putting it off, but, uh, and also I'm really terrible at making image tutorials. Hang on, let me adjust my mic here. Really terrible at making image tutorials. So, um, but now with livestream I can actually do a video tutorial. So, uh, that's what I'm going to be doing. Um, if you miss part of it, I'll be putting this up on DeviantArt, Tumblr, Facebook, stuff like that. Um, so I'll be inking Mommy here from, uh, Puella, Magi, Madoka, Magica. Um, start with your sketch. Um, and uh, I'm not really good at telling people how to sketch um, because I haven't really gotten it myself. But uh, just uh, make sure that when you uh, scan your sketch in that it's fairly clean. Uh, I have trouble with uh, sketching things too messily and not clean doing, up enough doing enough cleanup. So um, a lot of times I end up getting really frustrated with my inking because I uh, don't know where to put the lines because I didn't clean it up enough. So uh, what you're going to do is you're going to open it up in Photoshop. Um, pretty much any version of Photoshop will work. I'm using CS5, um, but up until about 18 months ago I was using Photoshop 7 for basically everything and before that it was Photoshop Elements 1. So um, what you're going to do is hit Control u on your sketch layer. It'll bring up your hue saturation palette. Uh, you're gonna go. You're gonna click the colorize uh, button there. You're going to set your hue to 210. You're going to set your saturation to 50, and you're going to set your lightness to 50 as well. Let's turn up the saturation just a little bit on that. All right, turn up your saturation to 75. I lied. Uh, but your lightness is still at 50. So uh, then click OK. Um, then we're going to move into Psy, and uh, Paint Tool Psy uh, has canvas limitations, at least it does on my machine. Um, and so you're going to go to image size, and the maximum that my version of Psy can handle is uh, 5800 pixels high, so I'm going to change that there to 5800. Alright, that's all done. I'm going to save it, close out of Photoshop, and then move into Psy. Uh, Paint Tool Psy is, uh, it's a really cheap program, I think it's like, it's under a hundred dollars, I know, uh, so, and a lot of people do their art exclusively in Psy, uh, it's a really neat program, it's got some really cool tools, really neat, uh, blending engine, uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, find the, uh, picture I was using, let's see if I can find it again, that's, I'm really terrible with organization, so, okay, there it is, okay, I'm gonna open it up, hear my cat in the background. Okay, so you're going to start a new line work layer. Ignore all these layers. Um, I actually already inked this this image, but um, I am uh, inking it again for the uh, benefit of you guys, which is not a big deal. Um, do go to the line work layer. The other thing is that a lot of people ink with a tablet. I have a tablet. I have a Wacom Bamboo. Uh, but I barely use it. Uh, I use it for detail work, really. Um, I keep joking that someday I'll be a real artist and actually use my tablet, but uh, I don't think it's going to happen. So, new line line work layer, and you're going to be using the the tools you're going to be using mostly are the curve, pressure, and weight tools. Um, I'll explain what they what the uh, pressure and weight tools do uh, when we get there. But for now, uh, go to your curve tool, and that I'll just show you here real quick. That makes these curves. It's kind of a vectory sort of tool. And um, that's really what I use to ink. And so zoom in. I always start with the face. Um, I don't know why. I just, I always have. Um, so pick a line weight that, I, I always pick one that's pretty thin. Um, thin enough that it won't distract from the image, but thick enough so that you can still see it. Uh, and like I said, I always start with the face, usually the eyes. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just click all along her top eyelid here. 
and when you're done with the line, just hit enter. Um, and I'm actually going to go past her eyelashes here. I'm just going to ink without eyelashes, and I'll tell you. I'll show you why later. Um, but here we go. Click all the way around. Press enter. Uh, and the nice thing about this vectory lines is that if you hit, if you hold down control, uh, this is on a PC. I don't know about a Mac, but I don't think you can actually run Psy on a Mac anyway. So, oh, okay. Uh, my wife says you can. Uh, so, uh, yay. Uh, so uh, you can actually, if you hold down control, you can move these points around, which is nice. Um, if you hit, if you hold Alt, you can actually get rid of some of these points. Which you know, if you're just, if you're like me and you just click too much and you realize you don't need all these points, you can smooth it out, get rid of some of them. Uh, if you're sloppy like I am, you can move the, you make the actually the ends nice, and you know, match them up. Um, let's see, I'm using a. Uh, Four point line here for most of the lines probably. Um, I'm zooming in and out with the with the mouse wheel by the way. Um, but if you want to like if you start out using a four point line or something or some whatever line and you decide, you know, I think that's too thick or too thin, you just click on your weight tool. And this only works as far as I know with the vectory curve tool, is you you click you choose another weight down here. Like, uh, okay, it's four now. Say I wanted to thin it out to two, and you just click on it, and Psy will thin it out for you. I took a while to discover that, and once I did, I was extremely happy. So, I'm just going to, uh, I think I'm going to continue using four. Uh, when I, I usually work really big because, uh, like, I, I, I color and draw like the Swedish chef. Like, I, I'm not precise at all. I'm really impatient. So, that's good. Um, you don't have to follow your lines exactly if you think of something else that would be better. Like, uh, oh, I was thinking about those tools you can move your uh, your navigator around while you're using it. Uh, like, I'm not exactly following the lines that I put here. I'm really sorry if this tutorial is kind of spazzy. This is my first video tutorial. My for first tutorial of any kind, really. So, uh, yeah. Sorry if this is all spazzy and not professional looking. I'm sure it won't be. Uh, that's one of the reasons I've kind of neglected to even do tutorials at all because um, so many people are better at this than I am and probably can make better tutorials. So, okay. So I've got her eye inked. Um, now with the eyelashes, you can ink them, you know, normally. Um, but what I like to do is I like to get a really thick, really, really thick um, weight here and make them with this. Um, I just recently started doing this um, and they look terrible right now but uh, we'll fix that in a second. So just kind of roughly ink where you've placed your eyelashes if you've drawn them. Um, this again is just how I do it. This is definitely not the be all end all of how to ink and sigh. Um, so, uh, yeah, if you've found a better way to do it, or you have any suggestions of how to improve my technique, feel free to tell me in the comments, or email me, or drop me a note, whatever. Anyway, so let's fix these eyelashes. This is where we're going to go to the pressure tool. When I discovered the pressure tool, I about cried because it was so awesome. Um, the nice thing is that you can still move your points around if you can hold control. You don't need to be on in the uh, curve tool to do that. I'm going to give this eyelash a little curve. Okay, so what the pressure tool does is you click on a point, and if you move it to the left, it will decrease the pressure, the pressure like that you would have had in a pen. Um, and you can taper the lines and do that till, you know, till you're satisfied, till they are about the thickness and taper that you want. Um, and that's the pressure tool. Um, oops, there we go, that's better. Um, and it's a great tool. It's one of those tools that, as far as I know, is pretty unique to Psy. And when I f color this, uh, I'll end up filling this whole thing in with black so that it's it doesn't look silly. Um, the other thing to do with the pressure tool is like, uh, let's ink her nose. Let's line up her nose. Um, Again, I'm using a four point um, width and just uh, going where I put my lines. 
Um, now, I'm going to hide my uh, sketch for a minute. One thing I see a lot of beginners do is just kind of leave lines like this, like really kind of blocky and heavy at the end. One second, I need some water. I'm not used to talking this much. Um, and that's one of the reasons that I held off on digital inking for such a long time. Uh, because I really hated that look. I thought it looked really really kind of unprofessional and I didn't really want to go in and take all the time in the world to hand taper the lines. Uh, but this is again where the pressure tool comes in because you can make these lines taper off and make them really nice clean strokes. Yeah. So, um, I don't always do that. I mean like like here if they're meeting at a corner, the corner doesn't necessarily have to be uh, sharp, though if you wanted to, you can make it sharp. Whoops, don't do that. Do that. Yay. Um, so, uh, the other thing is, and again, I've just kind of started doing this myself, is to play with line weight uh, and line quality, even if you're doing really solid cell shading like me, um, like uh, with her mouth here. I'm going to, let's see, I'm actually going to bump the uh, width up to six. And I'm going to just outline where I had drawn her mouth. Uh, I tried to give Mommy kind of an enigmatic smile because she is kind of a little bit mysterious at first. And she's such a cool character. Of course, all the characters in Madoka are cool. Anyway, um, and then uh, I'm going to give her a little bit of, not a laugh line, I'm not sure what you call it, but a little little definition here. Um, just a little bit, so it's not just kind of a stray line for her mouth. really hope the audio is working, because that would be sad if I got through this whole tutorial. And yeah. the, uh, no, I'm good. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Get echoey. Um, oh, okay. I've been told that the audio is working. Hooray! Uh, who's all in here, by the way? Oh, just you, Jess. Okay. Uh, so... Uh, I'm also going to do the same thing for her bottom lip here, is just give it a little bit of definition. Not much, just a little bit. <laughs> You're the only one that loves me, Jess? Okay, Jess claims it, that she's the only one here because she's the only one that loves me. Um, I'm also going to give her top lip a little definition, um, just because she does have such a defined smile. And uh, you can put these in and add, you know, take them away later and mess with them. This is definitely not the be-all, end-all of inking. Uh, I don't claim my techniques are, unlike some people, <laughs> Tom Preston. Um, so then we're going to go back to the uh, pressure tool and again taper this little um, definition. Not all the way. Um, same with this. Do, 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 do. Um, and, uh, then the reason I made it thicker, oh, you should do that to these lines, uh, was that I, c I could just play with line quality a little. Um, so I'm gonna take this point here on her mouth and make that, oh, sorry, <laughs> Kristen, stop watching TV while I'm trying, Hulu, yeah, it's Hulu's fault. Anyway, back to tutorial. Uh, I told you this isn't going to be pro professional, and there's why. Um, so I'm going to just make this line a little thinner, this point a little thinner, rather. I think I'll do the same here, just to give it some some more shape, some more definition. Um, same with here. Um, and this, I mean, I'm sure there are rules to this. I just kind of wing it, which is, is not necessarily a good thing. Um, but I think of where, like, if this was an actual mouth, like, where the definition would be a little more prominent. And, uh, kind of go from there. So, there's part of her face. Um, I'm gonna just ink her eye, really, her other eye really quick so she's not, you know, mommy one eye. And... I know I said to make sure your sketch is really clean, but this one obviously isn't. I think I actually, because um, what I do with my sketches is I sketch really rough and then I scan them, uh, put them into Photoshop, do the same thing I did to make the blue here, 
and then print them out and sketch over them. And I do that several times until I'm satisfied. And I can, I can take like five or six times to do that. And I think I got sick of redrawing her face all the time because her face looked fine. It was just her insanely detailed costume that I was having trouble with. And so I just said, oh, to heck with it. I'll just add the face in uh, later with a previous sketch. Um, and so I think that's why it's so messy is because there's actually two sketches on top of each other. Oops. Um, again, I'm, I'm not very professional at this. I'm, I, kind of, I, like, I draw like the Swedish chef. It's really the best way I can describe it. It's just kind of all over the place. Okay. I'm not going to bother with the eyelashes because you saw how to do that. Um, another thing to do with line weight is like, because the face is a little more um, kind of finer details, like you could go ahead and make the rest of your lines or like your outer lines, like five, like I'm going to outline her face here, actually. Better yet, uh, I start a lot of new layers uh, so I can go and change things if I want without having to worry about a lot of intersecting lines. So I'm just going to start a new line work layer. Um, and then I'm, now I'm going to go ahead and outline her face. You could also do it in reverse and make everything a little smaller with the weight tool. Um, I do that sometimes. It really depends on my mood and the picture and things like that. And there we go. So her face now has an outline. Yay! Um, I also hide the sketch a lot so I can see how things look. Like move that point there, tweak things just a little. Let's see. Uh, I'm not going to bother tapering these lines because they're going to be, um, they're not raw lines, I guess you would call them, because uh, they hide behind other lines. I'm sure there are much better ways to say all this, but I'm not smart, I guess. <laughs> um, so. I should finish that. I would usually finish that line, but I'm just, this is just for example. Um, again, you can vary your line width to show kind of details. You can taper this line because it will be raw. Uh, so like for this little lock of hair, which has a little separation in it, like I'll go back down to like three, three points. And it's a little on the thin side, but oh well, you get the picture. Um, like that, and pressure, taper the line, and uh, kind of rinse and repeat for the whole thing. And that's basically how I ink. Uh, you don't need a tablet to do it, um, just a mouse, and that's about it. Um, I used to really hate inking, but ever since I discovered Psy, it's become kind of relaxing because it's not so stressful. Um, uh, again, Psy is a pretty cheap program as far as art programs go. I think it's, I think it is under a hundred dollars. I forgot how much it was when I bought it, but yeah, that's how I ink. Um, I'll probably do another tutorial later on how I color, which is a little different than some people cell shade, but. Uh, the thing with cell shading and digital coloring in general is you kind of have to get your own style. Like, you can start with someone else's and maybe you can stick with it. But for me, I started with my buddy Laura's style. She taught me how to do it way back in the day, and it's evolved since. So, uh, there's inking. That's how I ink. Uh, so I'll see you all later for the next one. Bye-bye.